Jack, what a pity that you didn't have time to orchestrate the B section. I would really have wanted to know how you took that on. Okay, well, um, I have so much to say about your score. Let's start with the dynamics and with the scoring of the wins here. Now, I really like the way that this is all scored. I really don't have any problems with anything technically, except for just this one thing here that you've got uh, you've got Atu or you've got doubled um, French horns on this B. Did you did you hear how it just really started to stand out from you know in your mock-up? Well that is that is true in real life. That is what's going to happen there. You only need one horn here. And furthermore I would say you know, since this is extremely delicate kind of, of harmonic scoring, sort of scoring a chorale with uh, two horns. I would put these on the same staff and have it be horns one and two. Now, if this is, um, you know, if this is horns and F and we know that that's the staff and so on, all you have to do is just say HN period one. You don't have to say FR period HN period. Like there's, yeah, we know it's a French horn or a horn or whatever. A horn is a horn, right? Unless you're, if you have like maybe a big, um, a big crossover score, and you're uh, the person who is, um, who is you're working with insists on calling their, their, um, their little nine-piece brass section in the middle of the orchestra their horns, right? Then yeah, then you would do that. But here you just need HN1 and you, you know, you might not even need to capitalize it, right? You could just have it in lowercase letters sometimes. So anyways, uh, but yeah, capitals is cool. So HN1. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, but let's talk about the dynamics. Now here, you do not need to go to mezzo piano. A piano is fine. So solo flute, piano, and then English horn and clarinets is pretty much transcription of what's in the piano score. And I, I like the beautiful, long, luscious lines. That's all great. Now, if you have been watching some of my other evaluations, then you will have noticed that I am questioning people about their idea. Uh, you know, what are they, what are you telling your wind player to do when you have a slur over repeated notes? Is that intended to be like some sort of portato or, you know, like a super legato kind of a playing or whatever? I mean, you can hear in the mock-up that you're obscuring the dotted rhythm by putting a slur over it, right? So, uh, and then there's other, also, you know, the, the question of slurring across a downbeat, you know, so like we kind of don't feel, you know, nobody is tonguing on the downbeat, right? So we just kind of never hear anything kind of clear on that downbeat until like right here, right? Like cause that's that's where we get somebody tonguing the downbeat. So, so you so just really think about not just dropping the piano slurring onto your winds or strings, right? And just really think about what you what it really means when a player is playing everything under one breath. What if you went, if you, you know, if you really just wanted that smooth, gooey sound and didn't care about emphasizing the downbeat in any way? What if you just slurred? the first two notes of this phrase, da, and then ta, ta, and then you could slur up, ta, or you could go, ta, 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 ta. Do you know what I mean? And, and if you're really worried about it not being legato enough, you just mark it legato at the beginning. But back to what I was saying about the dynamics. So, you know, piano is an entire world, right? If you, you you got to trust it and not trust your mock-up so much in terms of the dynamics. I mean, this, there are some things actually really obvious in the dynamics that actually the mock-up can tell you that are right and wrong and so on, um, that you know that work or don't work. But yeah, but here I think you just need to say piano espressivo. That's it, right? And then the player will play out as much as they need to, but they'll still be kind of in that world of piano, and they won't be in that sort of moderated less, you know, less prominent world of mezzo piano, or less, sorry, less prominent, less, um, less, I think less colorful. I just, I think mezzo piano is a little less colorful than piano in terms of like getting the nuances and the, the beauty of the instrument. So, all right. So 
why not just have everybody have the same dynamic approach, right? So if this is coming in pianissimo, then the bass clarinetist should be the same dynamic. So you could actually hear that the bass clarinetist was a little louder than the other instruments right in here. And you, know, you could really hear that, right? And then on the diminuendo, everything fixed itself. So what if you just kept everything pianissimo, right? Because like the, you know, with adding the bass clarinet, you do get some of that, um, you do address some of that concern um, that I've got in my criteria, um, which is, you know, is there an emotional and timbral progression uh, in the treatment of the melody? I feel that that works enough, just having that dynamic swell. And then here, adding voices and so on and so forth, bringing, uh, you know, greater emotional and dynamic context to it, um, then, then I think that that works really, really great. And I, you know, I like the idea of the overlapping slurs, but I'm just not sold on slurring over repeated notes like this. I mean, look, it does happen and it is not a big deal. I just want to make sure that you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> By slurring across it, because everybody is slurring, or not everybody, but so many people are slurring across these notes, just dropping the piano slurs. And this is something I mentioned in the, um, in the um, common errors thing, is you know just dropping the piano slurring onto winds and strings and so on. Uh, and so people apparently didn't watch that part of the video. Please, you know, go back and watch that video. All right, and you know, come back to your score. So, um, so yeah. So, but I mean, I like the idea of the of the slurs, you know, the phrases overlapping. I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, but I mean, just just think about the actual uh, consequences of tonguing and and you know melisma. In other words, you know notes notes under one breath without a, a consonant or a so anyways so so just think about that all right all right so back to the dynamics what if you just kept everybody pianissimo and you came back to pianissimo here and then here uh piano in the accompanying instruments and mezzo piano in the in the solo instruments right all right so so these guys piano these guys mezzo piano right if you were really wanted to have that difference but I you know what I think I don't think that any of that is necessary uh, I mean I think you could just bring everybody up to mezzo piano right and then push further because like you never really get above mezzo piano you have mezzo piano then you have crescendo what does that mean where are we headed to what is you know we don't really seem to go anywhere because bassoons come in at mezzo piano diminuendo right so it just means that we didn't really ever get above a mezzo piano so have a destination mezzo piano crescendo up to forte or mezzo forte or something right or or even just piano and then crescendo eventually up to a mezzo forte have like a bigger crest here dynamically and then just keep this under and don't go to just don't go to this unison just have a single horn right because you've already got weight on there from your english horn and so on and and your um your second clarinet so so there's and then of course there's the harp so let's talk about the harp so I'm, I'm a little curious why you preserved so much of the slurring of the piano but there's like no slurs over the harp so like you could just put this all under one slur just telling the harpist this is one big beautiful connected phrase okay so uh and, and in this case i would say this you know you would want this to be playing mezzo forte right with a little maybe a little diminuendo at the end and then you'd have a nicely balanced uh, first page there. I mean, very, very cool scoring, don't get me wrong. I, I really like the the placements of the pitches and the colors and everything else. I think that's really great. I mean, there are there have been a lot of entries so far where there was uh, winds and horns uh, working together, and, and I'm no different, right? That, that was also a choice I made. But, uh, but this was, I just felt that this had something unique to it. Just, you really did limit the amount of voices and you and you kept them really beautiful and fresh. I don't even think you need to go to a two flutes here. I think you could just stay with, with first flute. I think it'll balance fine. But, I mean, a two is just going to have that, you know, slightly phased sound, whereas everybody else is going to be continuing in a very beautiful, intimate way, right? So, yeah, just maybe you want to want to think about if you want that, you know, slightly uh it's, it's i'm trying to think of the 
try, trying to think of the right word. It's sort of like a sliding kind of a sound, almost like, um, you know, like uh, if you have a broom and you slide it against a wall. There's that quality to the the sound of the flutes when you when you have them exposed like this ah too right so think about that okay so now going to our second page where um and you've got your english horn and violins and so on so so like here like we're um like there's an expansion of scope, but it, it's really like we're there's many there you know you're preserving many of the colors of the previous page, so it doesn't feel like so much of a change, does it? Right there, that we're not really. Um, it's it's like you, you know will it feel like a fresh start is what I'm saying, right? And what I feel is it's more of a continuation than a, a differentiation, just not just like, that was the prologue and now, right? It's more like, okay, we're gonna keep going with where we were, right? Because we've got the, you know, we've got these same elements. You know, what if this were like all brass, right? Instead of the, um, instead of the winds, like what if we had that different tone color of the brass kind of playing the same role that the winds do in here, right? And along with the horns, you could just, you know, instead of just constantly really limiting, you know, there's, 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 the horns are just so limited in this arrangement, not a, not a critique against you or anything, but just like, just a kind of a question, you know, why couldn't they be playing a bigger role? Why couldn't there be more harmony involved here, right? Um, so anyway, so just, those are just some things to think about, um, you know, just how can, you know, can we make bar 11 sound different from bar 9, right? More different from bar 9. Now, I really love this right in here, this, um, the way that you're having your um, pizzicato double basses and then taking over from the, um, from there to the uh, arco middle strings. Now, one little thing here, just tell us how long you want this you know tell the bass player how long you want this note to be if you want it to last for a full a full quarter notes worth like two eighth beats then write that in right if you want it to last for three eighth beats plus an eighth beat then write that in just write in the exact length that you want All right this there's i'm just seeing an overuse of the lv tie right the let vibrate tie right just really just write in what you intend how long do you want it to last right now this is a little different <clears throat> um suspended symbol it's more of a common thing right uh but yeah i just yeah i just feel like pizzicato you know just just tell us you know, just tell the player how long you want his finger to be there maybe you know get adding a little bit of vibrato to keep the note going and then that's that's how long they'll play it. And it just feels over fussy to me. It's like on every single at the end of every single little phrase or little group of notes, little pattern in the um, in the double bass. All right, you do, you don't need it. Now, uh, back to the harp. You can beautifully hear the harp right in here. And um, if everybody really is playing piano, there's really no need for your strings to be pianissimo here. Everybody should be piano, double bass second violins everybody should be piano okay the horns could be possibly pianissimo just if you really want that balance with the strings and the winds here uh harp if the harp is mezzo piano along with the but you know once again i mean does this need to be mezzo like you've got doubling on that line with your english horn so does does it need to be mezzo piano i mean the players will figure this all out for themselves i think it's better to have all of the you know all of the players being the be the same dynamic just mark this whole section piano this whole section piano here in the in your um, winds if you really want a merging balance with your horns then drop them down to pianissimo otherwise you can leave them piano and then the harp is the one that needs to be marked up right to mezzo piano or mezzo forte right then then you get this beautiful glorious sound however <laughs> Moving on to the second half of this page or this screen, the harp just disappears. 
and and you must have heard that right like the only the only time that the harp really stood out was like when it was playing these chords right so what does that say it just means that this is lost if especially if the pizzicato of the double basses it just will swallow it right just gulp uh poco poco crescendo to mezzo piano and so on and so forth it just doesn't the left hand does not stand a chance here um you know and it, and it's and it really is kind of like pianistic scoring right what if the what if the harp's roll became just like big beautiful chords bum 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 you know what i mean like that that just sense of just like if you had the um the harp just just two-handed big rolled chords like you've got right in here right um then then the harp would be clearer now i really love the way that you have You've got some crescendo here. You're going up to mezzo forte and so on and so forth, um, and you've got your uh, your heavy brass coming in, and they crescendo up to mezzo piano. So that's a good balance. There's absolutely zero reason for your lower winds here to be mezzo piano and these to be mezzo forte. Everybody should go to mezzo forte in the winds and strings, right? And if you're whatever you're going to have the harp do, it should be going up to forte. So, so yeah, like by submerging, like you're, you're basically like by having your, your, especially I would say bass clarinet and bassoon, like down to mezzo piano, it'll just get swallowed up by the trombone, uh, by the trombones and, and the horns, right? They'll just, they'll just eat it alive. Now, you, you know, one possible thing is like, you know, while this is beautifully scored, the, the interpretation of the left hand, was there any kind of opportunity in there to bring in some variety, right? So like the same strategy isn't just used over and over and over again in the, in the, in the ear of the listener. So just something to think about. Now, I really appreciate that, that these didn't get slurred, you know, it's ba ba ba, right? So it, it really is, you know, down, up, down. And uh, if you are going to, if you are going to stick with this piano-like slurring here, which is fine, then really everybody should be doing it. And the horns, all of your winds, uh, second violins. You know what? Why aren't they doing it? Right. Now, it is a it is a soft dynamic, and so it's very easy for these players to play all the way across it. Um, I didn't. Hang on, I'm just gonna jump back to see something. Okay, yeah. So, so, so I think that you need to tell us that this is divisi, right? Especially because obviously it would be here. But just tell the player right here. I mean, they could technically play this D third, um, non divisi, but then getting down to here, this is impossible, right? Because Anything that low has to be played divisi. So you tell the player here, div period, right? Um, and I'm, you know, like my, I use the wrong version of my, of my score for the uh, lecture, right? And there were a bunch of things that I forgot to fix. You know, like I had, div I had a copy paste error in the horns that said divisi in the horns. I mean, just really some embarrassing stuff like that. So. And by the time I was deep in to my editing, I just, you know, I spaced that out. I was, I was learning a new form of editing, so that's my lame excuse. All right, so, um, but, you know, other than that, other than those, like, some balance problems and possibly, you know, throwing in some variety and some other kinds of things, it's just really a solid score, Jack. I mean, I feel you should really be proud of this. Um, and then, you know, right, right here at the end, um, you have some really beautiful colors, but did you notice how, like, by the time we got here, it was just all about the brass, right? It just, like, the other instruments really kind of started to disappear behind the resonance of that big, powerful sound, right? So it's just like, I mean, is that, if that is what you want, then there's nothing wrong with scoring this the way that you scored it, uh, aside from you know, some kind of low or mid-range flutes that are a little invisible when they're being played by the same, you know, by alongside first trumpet, right? <laughs> you know, like nobody's going to hear the third flute and so on. But I mean, the overall approach that you're taking here, this is really strange. What is this? Um, 
Hmm, that's weird. Okay, so that, I think that's meant to stand up. That's weird, but it wants to go the other direction. Okay, all right, well, I won't figure that out now. Actually, it got dragged down. That's what happened. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> Maybe I did that while well, I wasn't paying attention. But anyhow, um, aside from a few little errors like that, I think that the scoring is good, but like you would have to, if you didn't, you know, you could keep that warm feeling, but you would have to push your strings up to like a forte or something like that, or you would have to drop your brass down a little ways. And it isn't helped by some of the winds being marked the same dynamic level as the brass and this kind of really intricate close scoring, right? So, I mean, okay, so people might actually call me on this and say, well, look, Thomas is always giving the same advice. He's always saying that you should have the brass be softer than the winds and blah, blah, blah. Well, that is not true, okay? But the thing is, is that I'm getting a lot of entries that are scoring in such a way that the only way to make it really work and have a balanced sound is to drop the brass volume. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not me, okay? And, and the thing is, I mean, I, I actually do use that trick a lot of times in my scoring, and, and it's something that the conductor might end up saying anyways to the, you know, like, hey, brass, come down a little. Or, you know, they might just kind of do some things if everybody's marked the same dynamics that they sort of bring out the bring out the strings and the winds more just by the way that they treat them. And, the, you know, the brass not getting the same hairy eyeball, they will, they will just stay in their lane. Okay. Um, but, like, you know, there. I have also scored in ways where everybody's got the same dynamic, including the brass, and it's just the way everything is all laid out on the page, right? But like with all of these, you know, textures like right on top of each other, and you know, like here, like the here you see like the strings going down, right, into the province or into the area of the brass. I mean, how do you balance this without dropping the brass down a little bit? And, you know, without the brass just kind of swallowing what the strings are doing, you know? Well, the way you would balance it would be to rewrite everything, but I don't think that that's ne necessary. I think it's just, you know, just kind of, you know, being aware that there are ways of bringing all the colors together. If you can, if you can balance them in a large, in kind of like in a greater scope, right? by section rather than like intricately like one staff each and sort of has a, every everybody's got a different dynamic level which doesn't work because as i mentioned in the previous evaluation uh, you know the trombonist doesn't know what dynamic the tr the trumpets have got and you know maybe if you've written separate dynamics for each of the trumpet players right then they don't know what each other has because each everybody's got their own stand and they might think that their dynamic is too soft compared to the guy next to them, and they should bring theirs up or down. You know, so it's it's it can be a huge mess because like nobody you know nobody can be controlled like that. I know that there are some conductors that wish that they could <laughs> that wish that they could you know um, so like kind of turn a dial and have one player go up and the other player go down and stuff. Uh, but yeah, but you have got to make those decisions in a holistic way with your scoring, right? So that just what what you score works dynamically in broad ways, right? So, I mean, you're, you're on the right track here, Jack. So I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm being a bit, um, a bit obsessive and just really, really crawling into this piece and just really, you know, talking about this and that. But I mean, part of that is just because I feel I owe you a little bit more time because you didn't score the rest of B, all right? Uh, but anyways, it, it hangs together well. I really thought it was. I thought the mock-up sounded beautiful, and and you know, and I think that your your scoring skills here in Sibelius are pretty damn good. And uh, you know, you're thinking about a lot of things, but you know, but you know, just some of the things that I talked about. Think about them. I love your your proportions. I think they're all great. Like just you know, just like of the of the different character of each section and so on. So yeah, so. Great job, man. I mean, it's, it's really great to get a score from you. Um, it's really great to include you in, you know, particularly in this. I feel it's very, very special, um, uh, very special challenge this year. And you know, thank you so much for supporting the channel and to everybody who has been watching this far and who's also supporting or um, is subscribing to the website. 
uh, that all means a lot and, and and especially if you guys can take the time to continue with the process that I've started here by commenting on Jack's material by you know, letting him know what you think even if it's just to say that you like the piece right or or if you have some advice that I missed or if you disagree with me about something I just saw I read an email where somebody disagreed with me about eight clarinets that's all cool just everybody has got an insight or an opinion or a or or even just some some praise you know I mean it all really helps and it's all part of this process so so please leave that down below this video or on social media where you see this posted or whatever okay so thanks to everybody thanks supporters and uh, I don't know about you but I'm gonna go take a look at the next score <laughs>